Okay, so on PyLab's channel, he's released another version of Raspbian. Uh, this time it looks like Windows 10, uh, and he's called it Raspbian X Nighthawk Edition. Uh, ETA Prime covered, I think, a, pr a slightly previous version of this uh, a week ago, uh, and this has only just recently been uploaded. And there are, he's put three mirrors of the same image, it looks like, uh, because I guess once ETA Prime had covered his video, uh, then Google Drive was getting blocked. I had, I had people asking me to upload different images of, of different things that have been covered. Uh, so there's three mirrors. I downloaded mirror number three, uh, and that is in my downloads folder. So what I thought I'd do is uh, show you how to write it to an SD card, but also how to overclock it to 2147. So let's open Balena Etcher select the image, uh, the image has already been downloaded into my downloads folder. I haven't unzipped it, you shouldn't need to, so just click on it and hit open. You'll need a card that's 32 gig or greater, mine is a 32 gig card, hit flash. Now it usually doesn't take that long to write these images but I'm screen capturing uh, on my uh, 2010, so 10 year old Mac, um, so that's why it's taken a bit longer, but yours shouldn't take as long as this hopefully. So that's flashing now, Okay, so this is the message you get up when it's all flashed. Uh, so you can close down Balena Etcher at this stage. You can see on my Mac that the uh, SD card has been ejected. So what you can do is pull it out of your computer and then pop it back in again. And you'll see that it will slowly uh, register my card. There you go. So this is my SD card. Uh, and we want to go to config.txt and just have a look. Uh, and see what's been added. Crikey, there's a, so anything with a, a hash on there um, doesn't doesn't do anything. So you're deleting the hash to make some of these lines work. Um, but uh, what I tend to do now, I'm going to add a load of lines. It doesn't matter where you put it. Uh, now I usually sort of put a space and pop it in, but I've been told before that you don't need to put spaces or anything. But I just think if it looks a bit tidier, it's easier to come back to and adjust. So. Let me show you what I've added. So disable overscan equals one. If you get a uh, like a black border around your image, this will get rid of that black border. Uh, again, you don't need to do this. You could just put the card in your pipe and boot it up, and it will boot up without any overclocking, without any um, disabling the overscanning and so on. But the reason I'm doing this, so disable overscan, uh, that gets rid of the black border. HDMI ignore automatically defaults to 1080. Uh, often when you put Pi images on a 4K TV, uh, like my Sony TV, they will show in 4K and the Pi doesn't really run that well in 4K. So running the desktop at 1080 or even lower can improve performance. Then we've got over voltage equals six. That's because I'm running the processor at 2147 megahertz instead of 1500, which is stock. Uh, and GPU frequency 750. Now, I'm pretty sure it doesn't go any further than 620. But uh, it doesn't. It just seems to stay at that. So I've left it at 750 because you used to be able to run uh, the GPU frequency at 750. So we then save that. So now I've added the overclock and eject the card and pop it in the Pi and boot up. Okay, so it starts up looking like Windows 10. So we hit the space bar. It scrolls up just like that. Uh, and then the password is Raspberry. Hit return. Oh, I haven't got my ethernet cable in. Let's give it some internet. Oh yeah, so looking good. You can see that it's just picked up my internet uh, and the symbol just looks exactly like Windows 10. Uh, I don't know what the on-demand thing is, what's that? Oh, CPU information. Available frequencies. Let's try it and see what happens if I if I start something up, so start up Chromium and then get that on demand uh, above that. 917, 2.29. What? Don't know what that does. Let's give it a go. Let's just do a quick web search first of all. Hot UK deals because, uh, <laughs> if I spell it wrong, uh, it tends to be, Raspbian is really good performance. Uh, and you can see 
the whole skinning of it looks very much like Windows 10. Uh, all of the things down the bottom, so the Chromium logo, the Windows Store, which goes, gives you ad remove software. Uh, then you've got uh, your Mail app, Word, Excel, but these will launch, uh, so LibreOffice Writer. So it's basically just icons that go on it. Uh, and then the command prompt, which is Terminal, uh, the Notes app, and then you can see that Chromium's come up there. And then what's that? Oh, the CPU information that I'm using. That's interesting, actually, isn't it? So my uh, 2.2, so I, I put it at 2147 in the overclock. But my Pi, uh, I've updated the firmware. And uh, my Pi will go higher than that. I've actually had it running at 2300. Um, but let's not worry about that for now. Uh, I'll, I'll investigate that separately. So as you can see, that launch is nice and quick. And this is a great operating system to give to someone who is used to Windows, but wants a cheap computer that runs very well, is nice and secure. Look at that, I mean, it. so, so the page loads up super quick and it scrolls really, really nicely. Uh, now this has got the Chromium uh, Media Edition. I guess that's what that is, isn't it? That's why he's given it a separate icon, is it? Yeah, so Chromium Media Edition, uh, and I've got a separate video on this. There's a fix that basically means that the Pi doesn't suffer from the tearing uh, that it normally does when you're playing 1080 video. And it also means that you can use things like Netflix and Disney Plus and various things like that. So let's go to YouTube. You can see, performance is absolutely fine there are running a from an ordinary things SD we can card. Do together. All while staying home. This affects everybody on Let's the planet right this now. Stay safe, stay home. Let's do it together. We will keep each other company. You will now be called Digestive Day. I don't know, adverts you often Number can't change. Oh, no, I can't change everyone. it to 1080. Oh, I can. Just turn that I on. I can down. do this. Let's just take you to my kind of career there. But first, some rock yeah, and roll. So looking, looking very good. I hope good. this makes you feel better. And all this around, you know, all the all the edges, all the borders and everything. And also, so the version that ETA Prime had, this didn't look right, did it? It was like a white. It was it was a very light skin, and a lot of this looked a bit unfinished. Whereas this looks perfectly finished. Uh, so this is a later version that PyLab has has given out this time. So let's go to folders. And you can see that all the folders, if you're used to Windows, super easy to, to get used to. Uh, desktop, documents, downloads. It's always worth reading the README text that uh, Salvador puts on here uh, because it, it is, so it tells you a little bit about it. Uh, so Raspberry Pi 4, Pi 3. Oh, so you can use Raspberry Pi 3, but there is obviously extras there, first steps. Pi root, Chromium Media Edition. Yeah, so you can go through this and see all the things. Oh, so Retro Pi is in there. Uh, Steam is in there, so it's got Steam Link, uh, so you can play games from another computer in the house. Windows 98 Virtual Machine, so that means you can play Windows 98. So old uh, Windows and DOS games uh, can be played in that. Uh, and it actually launches a proper version of Windows 98, the full version of Windows 98, running in like an emulator, a virtual machine. And I've got other videos on that. I've also got other videos on uh, other PyLab builds and because they are great. I mean, there's so much time is spent doing this and putting all the apps in and everything. Um, so yeah, uh, Emulation Station seems a bit slow because it runs on, on X11. So Android mirroring. Oh, I saw that in one of his videos. I'll, I'll direct you to his video for that. Um, but uh, he shows his Android phone on the screen, which is interesting. Uh, so this was made just for fun and for my admiration of Box86 as well as to bring more users to ARM Linux. The skin is just a condiment that, uh, that many of you may like too. If you don't like it, just don't use it. It's not technically mine because it's based on tons of other people's work on GitHub with open source Love Salvador. And then he's got uh, various different things that he's done to it. Just great work, great, great work. Right, so let's go back and... Yeah, even like the office logo look. So I like the way that's been done, you know, lots of attention to detail. So VLC is in there. Uh, we know we've got Chromium and Chromium Media Edition, which is brilliant. Uh, this would be possibly my choice of what operating system to use. I really, I like Raspbian because of the performance on it, but also uh, the fact that 
uh, Highlab has put all these different add-ons. So things like RetroPie, uh, I see there's a Minecraft Pie, uh, DOSBox, I don't know what Curse Castella is. So some of these, 2D Counter Strike, that looks interesting. So lots and lots of things for you to investigate. Now I've covered a lot of the other things in my other videos, but I'm tempted to do that uh, 2D Counter Strike. Unreal Software. De. Quick play. Now I'm using a trackpad, which is possibly not the best thing if it's gaming. Uh, well, it's definitely not the best thing if it's gaming. Uh, so hopefully I won't be other, against other people. Right, I'm not I'm gonna read any of that. So it's gonna be WASD, I guess. No cursor. Right, where is my... Let's close that down. But that, looks, that looks pretty interesting. That looks like that would be a bit of fun. How do I close that? Disconnect, quit. And quit. Yeah, I would definitely be going back to have a look at that in my own time. So, uh, I like the way it's the Xbox logo for that. Uh, SNES emulator. No PPSSPP, which is uh, usually on there. Uh, so accessories, all sorts of things in there. Development, education, games we've covered, graphics. Yeah, so looking really good. Uh, if we go into settings, let's see what we get on that. So when you move up and down on the left-hand side, it appears on the right, which is the way I quite like to navigate because it's it's less button clicking. It seems much more intuitive. Uh, so if I go to settings, just see what we've got here. All sorts of things. So we've got our ordinary Raspberry Pi configuration. Uh, workspaces, XFCE, terminal. Print settings, which is interesting because I don't think that comes up in Raspbian normally. Oh, and it, it has picked up my uh, my network printer as well. That's good. I, I wonder if that's something else he's installed uh, just as part of it. As I say, there's so much stuff that gets added into this. Gparted, which is uh, a partition manager program, which is very useful. So I wonder if the imager has been put in. So he's put in Belena Etcher for writing to your SD cards. Incredible. Um, just, just great, great work. Notification center. Uh, Clock and calendar, volume all looks great. And the Box 86 is uh, playing, it's not Windows games, it's it's uh, Linux games. And I'm not really, I'm not that aware of many Linux games. I'd always had Windows in the past, um, and well, Macs don't have very many games anyway, and uh, and various different consoles and things. So, but if you look at, uh, at the PyLab channel, you'll see there's all sorts of games he's had running on there. So one of the recent ones was Quake 4, which was super impressive. And so if we go into the store, what you'll see is it, is it adds this, which is uh, the one that's already in Raspbian, but again, he skinned it. So if I was to put in emulator, you can still install it and use it normally. So even though this is an image which is created with loads of things on it, you can still add your own things to it. And that's Steam link down the bottom there. Yeah, super impressive. Uh, Cortana, what happens if you click on Cortana? It's got like a universal search thing, is it? Catfish. And this command uh, shows you what your CPU is set to. So let's hit enter for that. So sudo cat, sys, devices, system, CPU, CPU zero, CPU freak, uh, CPU info underscore max underscore freak. Uh, yeah, so it's running at 2294. Uh, so this on demand bit, uh, so I'm running at near which is weird. I, I don't really know. Um, I mean, that's what it's reporting on there. I suppose I could do this other one, uh, which I've got, which shows you the current frequency. So let's try this one, which should show the current frequency it's running at. So that's because it's running nothing at the moment. So let's get, let's, uh, oh, I, don't, I don't really mind that being there. Uh, let's get Chromium up and running and get YouTube. Let's minimize that so we can see. Invest as little as one pound in the world's that's leading terminal companies completely oh, free. Let's, Only let's with trading well. 212. 
Hold on, that's not my video. Oh, it's an advert. I've got Linus uh, advertising on my video. That's nice, isn't it? Uh, so, skip ad. Running in 1080. So now if I try it again, 229. So it is running at 2.3 gigahertz, really, pretty much, isn't it? It's close enough. Uh, now, I have got uh, custom firmware on here, and obviously I did change those settings, and I, and I think I remember uh, on Pylab seeing that he was going to try and implement a way of uh, being able to overclock on the system. That looks like it's working, but I guess I'll, uh, well, Pylab will be able to answer this, uh, or Salvador will be able to answer this. Uh, that's impressive. Uh, if it is running at 2.3, uh, I have used it on other things, but I... What's weird is I haven't got any voltage warnings or anything, and I haven't set the over voltage, so I don't know, quite know how that's working. So if you know that, if you know why that is working, let me know in the comments. But uh, it does seem to be reporting that it is running at 2.3. Anyway, I hope this helps. Thanks very much to Salvador at Pylab. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.